all over the internet, on TikTok, Facebook, Reddit, in the depths of the internet, pet owners are continually griping about groomers shaving down their dogs. Maybe you're here because it happened to you as well and you want to prevent it from reoccurring. What if I could guarantee you that it will never happen again and all you need is 15 minutes total in a day? You probably think I'm exaggerating, but I've had my own clients prove this over and over again just by adhering to a 15 minute daily schedule broken down into three easy steps. You have 15 minutes, right? And it's all about working smarter, not harder. Ultra successful people can often seem like they are simply just lucky. And yes, to some degree, certain ones are, but there's something that most of these self-made billionaire entrepreneurs have in common, and that's the knowledge that small habits tend to yield big results. These habits only take five minutes at a time for a total of 15 minutes out of your day, but I promise you they will snowball into enormous success over time. But hang on, why is that? Well, that's because habits become harder to break over time, and this is proven time and time again. As in, the more that you do something and the longer your streak becomes, the more important to you it tends to feel and the less likely you are to want to break that streak. And that brings me to the first five minute habit and this truthfully will be varying for most people depending on each unique dog, but it will only take five minutes maximum if you do it every day. It will help maintain a clean face, which obviously the point here is to prevent your dog from getting the number seven special, but also will reduce a smelly face and prevent bacteria from building up. So it's a really great habit to set aside time to do once a day. And the only thing that you will need is your fingers and possibly a fine tooth comb like a flea comb and a damp cloth. Habit number three on the list is cleaning your pet's eyes. So basically dust and airborne particles collect every day in your dog's tear ducts and often can be easily removed with just a finger. But it's possible you may have more issues than this. You might be familiar with those unsightly reddish and brown stains around the eyes of our typically white dog friends. And tear stains are problematic for many reasons. They can signal an underlying health condition and they can lead to infection if they aren't cleaned. And obviously, aesthetically, they're not the prettiest to look at. Dogs that have a short nose, large eyes, flat face, white fur, or congenital tear duct abnormalities are more likely to develop tear stains. In both humans and dogs, Tears typically drain from the eyes to the inside of the nose through something called the nasolacrimal duct. This is what causes your nose to run when your eyes get teary. Well, our dog friends don't cry, even if they've watched the uh, notebooks ending, they still have the same ducts passing through their eyes to their nose. Dog tear stains are typically caused by variations in the eyelid structures that causes tears to drain onto the face instead of down into the nasolacrimal duct. Well, it's possible that your dog could have a locked nasolacrimal duct or a condition that's causing excess tear production. Most dogs with tear stains don't actually have an underlying eye problem. The reddish brown color of the stains is caused by an iron containing dye molecule called porphyrin. When the body breaks down red blood cells, porphyrin is released. This molecule is excreted in the bile, tears, saliva, and urine of dogs. When excess amount of tears are released from the eyes, the porphyrin in the tears will stain the fur. Okay, so now the cause is out of the way. The problem lies that this buildup can really pile up and create large matted gunky areas in the corner of the eyes. And sometimes they may need to be shaved out. Depending on how large they get will determine how big of an area might need to be shaved. This obviously can really mess with your dog's face style in terms of a haircut. So to clean my more funky and gunky friends, you may need something else besides your finger and that is the warm washcloth and flea comb that I mentioned earlier. Apply the warm washcloth for a few minutes to the area. This will help to release the buildup from the skin slightly and then go in with the flea comb to brush it out once it's loose enough. Now, bear in mind, if you are doing this every day, it 
really shouldn't be that bad, so it should only take a few minutes maximum. This is all well and good, but keeping your dog's face tidy only gets you so far. So if you really want to get any haircut you desire at your next grooming appointment, then you really want to do this next thing. Think about it this way, grooming is a bit of a system. Most systems you will have an input, a process, and an output. Your input is just that, what you are putting in. What you are providing to the system in order to get a result, a desired result. The process is what happens to the input and determines the last part, which is your output, or rather your results. So let's say you put a one into your system. Stick with me here, this will all make sense in a minute. And your process maybe isn't the greatest, or you could even say bad. So on the output end, you get a zero. Ideally, when you input a one, your system should work at peak efficiency to not only at least give you a one on the output, but hopefully you will end up on top with an even better number at the end of it. See, grooming is a bit of a commitment and getting what you want out of a few hour grooming appointment really starts with what you do at home for the weeks, if not months, you go between those few hours that your dog spends at the grooming salon. So your output, i.e. your time spent at home brushing, is that five minutes a day, but your process, i.e. where you focus your efforts and how you are brushing will also affect your output, i.e. your dog's final haircut. And that's why not only five minutes of daily brushing is our next habit on the list, but I'm going to show you where to focus your efforts and proper brushing technique in order to make your system process the most efficient, thus giving you the best output possible, your haircut. So let's start with the where in this question and look at the areas of your dog that you should be putting maximum effort into so you aren't wasting your time and ending up not actually doing anything and your dog ultimately ends up getting as tangly as before and still needs to be shaved. That is what we are trying to avoid here. So most people always want to start on the backs of dogs. It's easy to understand since it functions on the idea that you start from top to bottom. And it's one of the largest areas, but what you really want to focus on are areas of your dog that are highly likely to be matted. And that is leg, neck, belly, ears, tails, and muzzles. They all have their reasons and most are pretty obvious. Legs, necks, and bellies are high areas of friction caused from walking, brushing up against things, laying down, rolling, collars, all of that good stuff. And tails and ears and muzzles are all areas that are either in use frequently from wagging or petting and eating. So if you only have five minutes a day, focusing on areas like these are going to get you ahead of the game. Plus, the more often that you do this, the less likely there will be tangles, or rather large tangles, and the faster you will get through the job, leading to more time to tend to other less important areas like their backs and their heads. But this is all fine information, but if you aren't brushing correctly, you might as well really be doing it with a spoon. So we need to talk about the how. If you haven't heard of the term line brushing before, then you really need to focus in because this is not only how professionals do this, but it is absolutely the foundation of at-home maintenance. It's just as it sounds, it's brushing in a line. You're going to lift the section of fur starting at the bottom of the section. So let's say it's a leg, you start at the foot, Hold up the hair with one hand and with your other hand, typically your dominant hand. Use the slicker brush to brush a thin section of fur. Slowly work your way through each section until all the fur in each section has been brushed out. It's important to be able to see the skin and getting the slicker brush all the way down right up to the skin is also very important. As I said, set a timer each day and dedicate five minutes to not only brushing, but line brushing and focusing on those problematic areas, and I'm telling you, you literally can't fail. But in order for all of this to work, we need to complete the last step to ensure that your canvas is perfectly clean. This last five minute habit is more of a fail safe for that last step that we just talked about, because if you didn't do a good job on step two, then this step will reveal that you just spent the last five minutes banging your head against the wall instead of actually brushing your dog. So there's a 1976 book by Jeffrey Stokes called Star Making Machinery. And he wrote this book about all the different factors that make people rise to fame. 
And it looked at musicians, artists, engineers, or rather creative people in general. And in this book, there's a tidbit of information that is the first citation in the Oxford Dictionary for this particular metaphor. And that metaphor is you can't polish a turd. And if you've seen that episode of Mythbusters regarding this lovely quote, you will know that it's actually incorrect. You can, in fact, polish a turd. But the takeaway here is that the metaphor is described as meaning something inherently bad cannot be improved on. And this rings true for this scenario as well. If your previous work was in fact subpar, this step will really not make it any better. So it's important that you do all three habits in conjunction with one another instead of just taking one or two of these habits and using them by themselves. Because in order for my guarantee I made earlier of your dog never being shaved again to hold weight, all three steps, including this third one, needs to happen. So that brings us to the last and third five minute habit. And that is using a fine tooth comb to check your work. This is important though, so listen up. Never, and I mean never, use the comb to demat your dog. If you hit a tangled area that you maybe missed on your first go, then hit it again with the slicker brush. The smaller bristles help to break apart the tangles as opposed to the comb, which would actually essentially be ripping out the tangled hair from your dog's skin. Not only will your dog hate you if you do that, and likely hate the comb as well, you're just gonna make your life harder in the long run because they are not gonna be enjoying this process. I do mean when I say this, set a timer, do each of the three steps in this order for five minutes at a time every day and only four or five minutes, there's truly no need to do more than that because if you're doing it daily, you can get the rest tomorrow. Small chunks like this make it easier and more manageable for you and more importantly, more enjoyable for your dog. So put in the 15 minutes a day if you want a cute, fluffy, or unique haircut instead of short all over situation. Now this is for everyday maintenance, but sometimes you might need to bathe your dog after it's rolled in something stinky, which he or she proudly disagrees with your perfume palette and deems to be a delectable scent picked out just for you. I can help you be more efficient with your time spent and even help to keep more money in your pocket over time. And that's in this previous video here. I break down five at-home grooming hacks that save you time and money.